Everyone, hey, it's Nate with Outside Cleaners. We're on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where it is cold, raw, clammy, drizzly, foggy February. I'm just putting the truck away after some cleaning, but before I do, I thought I'd make a video of the truck. This is our cleaning truck. We get questions about it from other cleaners who ask us about our setup, so hopefully this video will answer somebody's questions. The truck itself, the cab over chassis, is a 2018 Hino 195. It's a 16-foot flatbed, six-wheel. Um, Hino is Toyota's industrial division. The 195 means it's 19,500 pound max gross weight capacity. I wanted overkill. That's what we got. We don't come anywhere near that uh, weight on our setup, but uh, it's nice to know that it's not maxed out and there is room to grow if somehow we wanted to. This one has the four-cylinder turbo diesel and the automatic transmission. Uh, three seats up front, two if you fold down the big armrest. I'm going to just walk around and talk and give a tour. So, uh, starting up top, that ladder rack, that's a custom deal that we had fabricated right here in Chatham. And um, there really wasn't anything on the market that I liked and that was gonna be suitable. And I wanted something that was gonna make use of the System 1 work winches, which if you've seen my other video on ladder racks, you know that I'm a huge fan of. So these heavy duty straps hold the ladders in place, no bungee cords for the ladders, no you know silliness like that. Those ladders aren't going anywhere. Um, and I got room for more ladders than I could possibly need speaking of ladders I got this little little ladder here uh, I can set it in the rungs on the the stake body bed and get access up top side real easy no crawling around no dangerous uh, slippery anything like that just easy up easy down uh, big steel cargo box from Home Depot can store everything I need in there. Uh, I got room for spares, for boots, gloves, pretty much anything I can think of. I specifically got the wood body on this flatbed, not aluminum, not steel, not something I'd have to weld to if I wanted to mount my equipment. Everything is through bolted with galvanized hardware. On the back side of everything is backing plate. So Basically, the truck's got to fall apart for anything to fall off. Um, water tanks. Yeah, no, these aren't buffer tanks. These are water tanks. Uh, IBC, 275 gallons each. This is important for what I do because like today, I, I just washed a house where, you know, nobody's going to be there for two months. They're going to turn the water on in, you know, late April or early May. Um, I, I was able to clean it today, get it done today, work today, keep money flowing. But I couldn't do that if I didn't have water that I brought because they're not gonna pay a plumber to go in and turn on the water. And then all of a sudden, you know, you gotta, you gotta air out the irrigation system when I'm done and all that stuff. No, so I can bypass all that by having the water that I need right on board. Obviously I can't do, you know, huge McMansions with only 600 gallons of water but I can do a lot of jobs. I do a ton of decks in the off season, you know, all concrete, stone walls, the, the jobs that take four or five hours, I, I can do those no problem because I carry so much water. Hose reels, all my hose reels are on the right side of the vehicle because far more often than not, I pull up to the curb going with traffic the job is on my right side and I want my hoses to go out to the right. So I've got one, two, three, four, five Titan aluminum frame, aluminum drum hose reels. They're fine. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any complaints about them. Good quality. They do what I need. And again, like everything else, they're through bolted to the, the wood bed of the truck. Uh, this one is a 5 eighths product hose. I've got two reels for power washing hoses, another spare product hose, and this hose here for water input. So when I am at a job where there's house water available, that goes to the spigot and then I throw a valve and depending upon uh, which valve or you know which tank I want to fill or both, 
that's where it goes. Uh, this tank back here, that's a 125. That's what I mix my hydrogen peroxide solution in. So right now it's just got water. If I pull up to a job where I'm using uh, sodium percarbonate, I mix it on site, agitate it, and I'm ready to go. Uh, I can fill that 125 by throwing the right valves and just gravity draining it off the uh, IBC tanks if there's enough water in there. Let's see, down below I've got more storage boxes, everything from wheel chocks, uh, road assistance kits, first aid, slickers, respirators, goggles, you know, all the PPE, you name it. Right here, uh, proportioning setup from the powerwashstore.com. I know that there's other versions, newer versions out there, but I'm happy with this one. This is basically a metering valve setup so that as I'm spraying whatever solution I'm spraying, I can adjust the exact ratio of solution, you know, concentration of soap or, or peroxide. This is made specifically for sodium hypochlorite, which chlorine bleach is what most of my industry uses, but I use this for everything. I use this for everything from simple green to crud cutter, sodium hydroxide, sodium percarbonate, everything. You do the math, you can dial it right in, and it's amazing what a little adjustment makes when you're trying to get your solution strong enough, but not too strong. Uh, my pump. This is my product pump, air diaphragm pump from All Flow. Uh, it's been great to me. Every now and then I have to replace a gasket. No problem, I can do so on site. Um, it's very, very field serviceable. This is a half inch pump. I think it's rated for something like 17 gallons a minute. I don't get that much out of it because my flow uh, through the hose setup I have is too restrictive, but I have measured at times like 11 gallons a minute, and that's all the flow rate that I need and certainly all the distance uh, out of that pump. It's an air diaphragm pump though, so I do need an air compressor. That's on the other side of the rig. Um, moving around back. The big power washer is from Pressure Pro, eight gallon a minute, 3,500 PSI. I don't do anything really high pressure unless I'm doing, you know, concrete or masonry, but most of my work is soft woods and that's very low pressure. And I think that's why my equipment lasts so long because even though I got a lot of hours, it's running at low pressure, it's not straining. Um, this is sort of like the Ford F-150 of power washers. You know, it, it's fine. It does the job economically. You know, it does have a hot water option, which I have. I use it from time to time. Not a great deal, but it's nice to have. Um, if I was gonna do tons of really high pressure work or tons of hot water work, I'd get a better machine. But again, for, for what I do, this has been fine. I don't have any complaints. Next to it, I've got a smaller machine, four gallon setup. Um, everything's Honda machines. That, to me, that's the only way to go. Uh, I know that the you know Predator and some of the Harbor Freight knockoff types are getting popular because they're so cheap, but they're so cheap. This machine here, this probably has over 10,000 hours on it, and that's no exaggeration. This side of the rig, you can see I've got a chemical rack um, depending on the jobs I'm going to or the jobs I think I'm going to encounter that week. I'll have different buckets of different chemicals. Underneath, again, more storage. Gas for my compressor. I do have a 16-gallon soap tank right here. The air compressor uh, roll air, again, a Honda machine. This one is, I think, 9 horsepower. That air airflow, all flow air pump, they recommend at least six and a half horsepower. So again, I'm a little overkill, but too much air, it's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just, it's available if I wanted to put on it a bigger pump. Um, the other thing I did was I put in a switch so that if the 
if the electric start big power washer battery died i could just throw this switch and it would be able to start off the the truck battery and i don't know what else to say that's that's the rig um we bought it we bought it new in 2018 we bought it with four thousand dollars down our payment for five years was something like 1100 something a month and we just paid it off so we're free and clear we're very proud of that we own it um no complaints been very happy with it it does it does everything that we want to do and it keeps the money flowing so I, I should say that a big part of me being successful in this business has been being able to have options for whatever the cleaning job requires. So in other words, I don't, I don't pull up to a job site with, you know, my one bucket of one chemical. No, I, I have everything under the sun and I use everything under the sun during the course of a regular week. This vehicle allows me to do that. It's a toolbox full of tools. It's not just, you know, What's that old saying about carpenter? If you if, every, if you only have a if you only have a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, something like that. Um, no, I have the right tools for the job, and that's what this rig allows me to do. So, anyway, hope somebody found that helpful.